Hi boys and girls, my name is Mrs. Riolo and today we're going to read a nonfiction book about porcupines. Um, we are going to be reading a book that is published by Pioneer Valley Books and they have given us the publishing rights to read their books till June. So feel free to rewind the video and read the book as many times as you would like. Um, I hope you enjoy the book as much as I did. So before we get started, we're going to review a word that you may know or you may not know, but this word is going to be in our book two times. So I want you to be prepared when you see this word. The word that we're going to read today, read this if you know it, T-H-I-S. Do you know this word? The word is this. Read it, this. I would like you to pause the video and go get some magnetic letters if you have them um, to make the word this. If you don't have letters from a game like Scrabble or Boggle you can, um, or magnetic letters, you can make it using post-it notes. You can cut out little pieces of paper and write the letters on the paper. So go ahead and pause the video and join me back when you have the word this. All right, welcome back. So we're going to make the word this, and before our, we build the word and play a little game of mix and fix, we're going to play what's missing. So go ahead and put your eyes on the screen. Don't look at your word down there unless you have to. And I'm going to take away a letter, and I want you to tell me what letter that I took away. What letter is missing? Good, the T. Let's read the word. This. Good. Take a picture of it in your mind. All right, what letter is missing? It's our vowel. Do you remember what vowel is in the word this? Good, it's our letter I. Let's read the word again. This, good. This time I'm gonna take away two letters. What letters are missing? The H and the I, good. Let's read the word this. All right, nice job. Go ahead and make the word this if you have it in front of you and build it so it looks like mine and then put your finger under the first letter and we're gonna check it together. And when we check it, you're just gonna point or slide the letter up in front of you. Let's do this. T-H-I-S, this. Good. Now I want you to mix and fix it. So I want you to mix it all up if you don't have letters in front of you, then you can just join along with me and you can say out loud what letters I should move. So now I want you to build the word of this. What letter would I move up first? T, H, I, S. Let's make the word this. Good, now we're gonna write it on the table or a couch cushion or wherever you're sitting, even on the floor, if you're sitting on the floor watching this. And you're just gonna use your finger like it's a pencil and you're going to write the word T-H-I-S. Let's read it, this. Very good. So we're gonna see that word in our book today. And when we get to it, the strategy I want you to do is when you see it, read it. When we see those high frequency words, those words that we know, we just have to read them. All right, so like I said before, this is a nonfiction or an informational text called Porcupines. And so we're gonna be learning about porcupines. Before we open our book and do a book walk, I want you to think about what you already know. I want you to activate your background knowledge or your schema. That's a big word that we use sometimes. And what that means is just, what information do you already know in your brain about porcupines? And go ahead and share with somebody that's in the room, or you can just say it out loud to the computer screen. What do you know about porcupines? Good. Now I want you to think of a question that you might have about porcupines. What's something that you're wondering about them? Do you have any questions about the porcupines? Share those questions with somebody. So sometimes when we read informational text, we can actually answer questions that we might have about something. So your question that you have about porcupines, we may learn the answer to when we're reading this book today. We might not, but we might, which would be pretty neat. Before we get started, I want to flip to the very back of the book, and I want us to look at this 
glossary here. And so this glossary is showing us pictures with words. Sometimes uh, in informational text, they have features, and this is one of those features. It helps us to just know some of the tricky words that we're going to be reading and what they mean. So it defines those words through, for us, sometimes with words and sometimes with pictures. So let's look at these words. They're very big words that we're going to have to break apart. And so let's look at this first word. We know here that if we look at the picture, we can see that there is um, those things that stick out on a porcupine's, um, or sorry, this is showing us the animal, which we know is a what? It's a porcupine. Let's break this word porcupine up into pieces. So I see P-O-R, and if I sound that out, it says P or poor, C-U-Q-P-I-N-E, pine. So let's put those syllables together. Poor Q pine, read it, porcupine. So that's showing the animal. The next picture is showing us the back of the animal with those things that stick out that are very sharp. And I know that when you have a Q and a U together, it says the sound qua, qua. So the beginning of this word is qua. I-L-L -L says ill. So we have qua ills. Let's put that together. Quills. What's the word? Quills. So those sharp, sticky things on their back are called quills. And then our very last picture here is showing us not a porcupine, but it's showing us something else. Let's break this word up. We have R-O, which says row, and then we have D-E-N-T, which says dent, row dent. Let's put it together, rodent. The word is rodent. So it's showing us a rodent. Let's flip now to the beginning of our book, Porcupines, and let's do a picture walk on the book, Porcupines. So this is showing us a picture of a porcupine. Can you find that word that we built today? The word this? Can you find that word on this page? It's our very first word, this. Let's keep on picture walking. Good. Now I can see one of those words that was from our glossary here, the word rodent. Can you find the word rodent on the page here three times? Here it is, one, two, three. So we can see here that this porcupine is doing something. What is the porcupine doing? It looks like it's sleeping. Where is it sleeping? I can see a brand or a tree back here and a tree stump right here. So it looks like it's it's sleeping in a tree. Let's flip it through. Here's our porcupine again. And what is our porcupine doing? It looks like it's sitting up on a rock looking for something. I wonder what it's looking for. And then, oh, do you remember what those big, long, sharp things on their back was called? The word was quills. Can you find the word quills? It's two times on our page, quills. Good. We have it right here and right here. And those quills look very sharp to me. Oh, this is a cute porcupine. I noticed there's something different about this porcupine. The quills look different and it's smaller. So I'm wondering if this is maybe a baby porcupine. Let's keep flipping. And then we're at the back of our book. So now we're gonna come back to the beginning and we're going to read our book, Porcupines. As we're reading our book, I want you to follow along with me and read along. This book was written by William Hugo, Porcupines. Okay, here's our word from today. This is a porcupine. A porcupine is a rodent. A squirrel is a rodent. 
A mouse is a rodent too. And you can see that the author has left picture clues there to help us with these words. So don't forget to use those picture clues when you're reading. This porcupine is sleeping in a tree. Some porcupines live in trees. The porcupine is looking for, it's looking for something. Let's figure this tricky word out. We have the letter S. What does S say? S. A L T is going to say alt. So we have s alt. What's the word? Salt. So let's come back up to the beginning of our sentence and read it. The porcupine is looking for salt. Why do you think a porcupine would be looking for salt? What would they be doing with salt? What do we do with salt? We eat it. Let's see if that's what the porcupine does. Porcupines like to eat salt. Huh, I did not know that about porcupines. That's a new fact for me. I did not know they like to eat salt. Did you know that? Porcupines have long quills. The quills are sharp. Here is a baby porcupine. Look out! The baby porcupine has sharp quills too. All right, and that's the end of our book. Boys and girls, thank you for reading our book, Porcupines. I hope that you can enjoyed our book. I challenge you to do some writing about our book today. Maybe you could write a fact that you enjoyed or that you learned about porcupines. I also challenge you to rewind this video, push the or take the volume down and read the book again by your